Hello my friends, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Sarita. Um, this is a proof of life video. <laughs> yes, I'm still here. I know it's been, oh gosh, a week and a half, almost two weeks since the last time that I recorded. So I apologize. It was a confluence of a lot of factors. My day job is just, it has been so punishing the last two weeks, like working like an extreme amount of overtime. <laughs> I'm exhausted, but it's a Saturday. And I told my workplace, I am off today. I am just completely off. Still getting some random text messages, but everybody who got the message, and got the memo, is not contacting me today. So, whew, I'm taking a deep breath. Also, on the other end, um, for whatever reasons, my YouTube account is like really messed up on the like business end of things. So I've been trying to work with YouTube like on the side to kind of get it fixed. It hasn't been, I just kind of naturally took a little bit of a break from it. <laughs> um, so I have been burning some candles here and there. I'm actually looking off camera at my like off camera ledge. I have one, two, three, four, five, six burned candles that are ready to review, not to mention like the many that are burning right now. And I've done a lot of hauls as well. So today we're gonna do a random haul of Village Candle, Yankee Candle, and I might have a few little candles here from Homeworks, maybe. Um, and I have a haul coming from Kringle. I did order this last drop with the Halloween situation. Only got a couple, but I did get a lot of like wax melts from their recent fall collection, etc. Tried to kind of look back and be like, what has happened at Kringle that I can easily purchase without a huge investment to be able to kind of smell? It's been a minute since I've ordered from Kringle, obviously. Um, and I do have thoughts about the Kringle Halloween hauls. They were split up into two this year. I have been very unspoken. Is unspoken the right word? I have been, I have not been shy about saying that I do think that Halloween is Kringle's probably biggest event and most important event for their company. Um, I think it's the arena in which they shine the most. They are bringing something to market that almost no other major candle companies are doing, certainly not on the scale of Kringle. Um, and while Halloween isn't necessarily my holiday, I know for a lot of people out there, it is your holiday. And there are people who really don't buy from Kringle on a regular basis, and they do for that Halloween haul. That is a huge marquee event for Kringle. Um, and from what I can tell, mixed reviews this year, mixed reviews and probably some missteps, but not like a complete like dumpster fire either. So we'll talk about that once my little mini haul comes in. Um, but today let's talk about Village and Yankee. So I was watching my candle brother, um, all about candles, Greg from Calgary, Canada. And he has been, because the candle pickings are slimmer up in Canada and it's, it costs a pretty penny, frankly, to ship American candles up to Canada. Some candle, smaller candle companies may not even do so. Um, Greg has to make do with all kinds of other um, ways, maneuverings to get his candles. And one of the places that he uses is Amazon. And I tend to not use Amazon as much and it's partly because I have good availability here in the States to a lot of candle companies that I can usually gotta get a pretty good deal on. And um, the candle prices on Amazon fluctuate but are usually, especially if they're legit coming from the company, um, usually a little bit more elevated in price than you would get from some of these companies. And usually, if a company is having a sale, none of their Amazon candles will be on sale, for instance. So it tends to be kind of a sticker price situation on Amazon. The one major exception to that is Illume. Illume, and I've talked about Illume candles before. I 
highly recommend if you are interested in Illum candles, want to pick something up, please do not use the Illum website. I don't even know that it's very like consumer facing in an intentional way. They tend to do their biggest business contracting with other retailers. Um, so you can buy the candles off of the Illum website, but they're, the sticker price is kind of ridiculous. Buy them off Amazon. They are always an excellent deal on Amazon, usually significantly reduced from the sticker price, and that price often fluctuates a great deal. So Illum candles, no matter where you are, please buy them on Amazon. Village and Yankee. Yankee has been making a bigger appearance on Amazon, actually. Mm, tend to be a little bit of an elevated price point, but beggars can't be choosers if you're in inter an international market. Anyway, when I was watching Greg, I was like, oh, what's going on on Amazon? I think it was right over the Amazon like Prime week anyway, so I was kind of looking because last Prime, um, last year when they did Prime Day, like their Illum candles were all discounted even more. It was like 50% off of their price on Amazon. So I got a ton of Illum candles last year. It was a great deal. This year they weren't running as many like candle sales. I think Homeworks had like a candle deal going last Prime Day too. This Prime Day there weren't as many candle deals, but I just kind of took a look. So I ended up buying a lot of Village candles. I think I probably got them kind of in the 15 to $18 price point, which is fairly decent. Village Candle hasn't been running a whole lot of sales, or I should say their conglomerate owner, Stonewall Kitchen. It has not been running as many sales on candles and their shipping price has gone up significantly over the last two years. It's not really a surprise. Shipping prices have gone up for everyone. But um, if I recall, the last time I looked, shipping for Stonewall Kitchen was up in the like 15 or $17 range. Like it was craziness. It was craziness. So 15 to $18 for a single candle on Amazon, including that shipping, is actually a fairly decent price for one of these like large paraffin tumblers. So um, while I prefer mediums, the mediums are not really on Amazon. I had to get some of these larger ones, but I wanted to try them out and I thought 15 to $18 was good. Also, the really positive thing about ordering from Amazon is that if you don't like the way the candle smells, you can typically return it free of charge. You know how Amazon goes, right? As long as it's not burned, as long as it's not ridiculous, they'll probably accept it, no question. And my Amazon candles came actually shipped in like village candle boxes like this. And on the side, Village just says, hey, this is ready to ship and then sent it out. So really fairly well packaged. They weren't like thrown in an Amazon bag or something. So I had no problem getting these candles. I also made a Yankee Candle purchase and that was directly from Yankee Candle because I think that they were having not only a big three wick sale, but it may also have been free shipping too. So I got a ton of these new three wicks for fall from Yankee Candle over the last few weeks and I wanna share those with you. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, I've been snapping up. The Yankees that I did buy on the Amazon, they did have a few mediums on Amazon. Um, and I think maybe a couple Am um, mediums on the Yankee Candle website. So I've been snapping up these like amazing, my favorite Goldilocks size. Um, as you all know, this like, this more modern tumbler is being discontinued. And I think it's a big mistake because we've all grown accustomed to it and actually really like it. They store amazing. And maybe it's just, I know the wax formula is the same one that's in this one and is in the clip art jars. But for some reason, I just feel like I don't, I, maybe it's a coincidence. I have not gotten good performance from the clip art jars that I have bought with like the really unattractive metal lid that look kind of like trash cans or Glade candles with all the cl crazy clip art. Um, I have gotten really good burn performances for the most part from these more modern tumblers and they look a little bit more subtle with the clip art. So, and same diameter as a regular two wick 
Oh, just, yeah, I'm really sad that this medium is going away. I'm sad that the entire style is going away, but certainly with these mediums. So I do have a couple of these as well. Every time I kind of see a candle that's from Yankee that I've either wanted to try or even as one of their OGs and I just don't have it in my collection and want to burn it again, and it's in this format, I'm snapping that up. Okay, without further ado, let's talk about Village. So I bought one, two, three, four five large um, village candles. So let's talk about them. One of them I am returning, actually two of them I am returning, um, but only one because I didn't like the fragrance very much. So let's talk about that. It's already in its little box, ready to be shipped back. All right, so this is right here, Winter Clementine from um, Village Candle. I I smelled this one in a grocery store. We have a bougie grocery store here where I live and they sell a lot of village candles. And I smelled this and I was like, oh, I really like this. Like the next time that I buy a village candle, I'm gonna buy one of these. And I got it and then I smelled it and I'm like, no, I don't like this. <laughs> Do you know, does that ever happen to you? Or like, you're in a store and I will blame the store setting for that because especially like if you're smelling something in Bath and Body Works or a Yankee Candle, if you're privileged enough to have one, right? Um, there's just a cacophony of smells and anywhere where you're smelling like a whole line of candles, you kind of start going nose blind. You're only picking up half the scents, half the notes, etc. And you can end up going home with a candle and being like, what is this? The next morning when you're drinking your coffee, smelling it, you know what I mean? That's kind of what happened with this one. That said, I think a lot of people will really, really like this. So this is, this is kind of very like, volcano from capri blue which is not a surprise for a couple reasons first of all because actually stonewall home has a candle they're probably very it's it's probably modeled directly off of this one called winter white which i like a great deal and i have a couple of those winter white is very similar in that it has that citrus and it has a beautiful spruce um, it's like a sparkling effervescent citrus with a spruce. If the white woods one though, or winter woods from Stonewall Kitchen is a little bit more sprucey than citrusy. So I do like that one a little bit better than this one. And it's a little bit less effervescent. This one is pretty effervescent. I would say the majority of the candle, or maybe it's just the top half of it because usually you're smelling those top notes, right? Yes, there is spruce here, just not enough. And the sparkling effervescence of this citrus is just very Capri Blue Volcano. And I am not a fan. I'm one of those few people in the world who doesn't love Capri Blue Volcano. Um, the other reason that I'm not surprised by this coincidence is that Capri Blue Volcano, and I've talked about this candle before, um, is actually, it does have quote unquote mountain greens which I assume is some amount of kind of deep musky citrus, I, or, I'm sorry, spruce. Um, although it doesn't mention spruce, it could be a fir. It's a very small part of that candle, but I think a very welcome one because it kind of grounds and roots it a little bit, especially because it's got all the sparkling bergamot, all the citrus notes up on top. And then it also has a very refined amber perfumey quality to it. Um, so not surprising that some of these Christmas citrus spruce candles do smell very capri blue volcano-esque this one is closer than the winter woods and i'm just not a fan yes i think it may also have some amber in it so kind of goes in a conceptual direction it's not for me i just what killed it was that like capri blue like resonance um, just like a few hairs back the other way towards spruce, subduing a little bit. That citrus might have made a difference for me, but I'm going to send this one back. And um, I, I think it's probably a very nice candle. And I think this candle has been quite around for quite some time for Village. So I think it's also fairly successful. I can't speak to how it's going to burn because I ain't burning it. Um, but 
that was the first one that's going back. This one's going back too, but not because I don't love it. Because I adore it. And that is this one right here, Coconut Vanilla by Village Candle. So, um, spoiler alert, like I have not actually burned one of these, but what I have burned, or melted rather, is this, which I bought from the company last summer. It was a wax melt from Village and it was under the name Coconut Breeze. And I love this Coconut Breeze. It is crazy strong, at least in the warmer. Like I put it in my warmer in my master bathroom and like when I open the front door, I can smell a heavy coconut vanilla deliciousness. It is extremely strong. So I'm hoping that's the case, even if it's a little bit less strong, um, burning it as opposed to melting it, I'm fine with that. But man, um, so uh, this is a very long lasting candle or a very traditional long-standing candle for village here coconut vanilla um i was looking all over the internet i'm like where is coconut breeze i bought it off of the when i was doing a village haul last year and i picked this up it was on clearance and they didn't have it in a candle form they only had it here so they must it must have been like a limited summer release and then they like burned out of them but when i was at the grocery store once i was smelling this coconut vanilla candle and i was like I think it's Coconut Breeze, and I'm pretty sure that it is, although I couldn't find anything on the internet confirming that suspicion, that conjecture. If you know, will you let me know? Um, Coconut Breeze, the notes listed here are coconut, vanilla, and musk, and then the notes listed here on the coconut and vanilla is butter, vanilla, cream, coconut, and musk. I think that they just repackaged coconut vanilla as coconut breeze and kind of did like a Bath and Body Works repackage of it. I'm pretty sure they're the same candle. Oh, this is a basey candle. It's basey. It is a lot of musk and I love it. And yeah, there is a ton of vanilla and yes, there is a ton of coconut. Ooh, and it's a dark, sultry kind of coconut. And I'm sure it's got amber in it. It's like one of those coconut conceptuals that is just so summery and so fantastic and so delicious all at the same time. The addition of the musk and probably the amber makes this not a 100% gourmand. Um, but wow, that is good. I mean, it's basic and it's simple too because it's really just firing so loud in that coconut. This is far and away one of the best coconut fragrances I have ever smelled. I'm obsessed. So anyway, I bought one of these off of Amazon. And then do you guys remember the Ocean Dunes candle that I bought from Village at the grocery store? And it had like no fragrance, none. So I went back and I was like, guys, I don't like this candle. It has no fragrance. Can I exchange it for another one? And they were like, yeah, who cares, you know? <laughs> They're a grocery store. I don't care about the candles, right? So I looked at all the candles and the ones that I really wanted was rain again, because I love that rain candle. I'm like, I could use one more of those because I burned the one and I'm sure I'll repurchase it again. So I almost got the rain candle, but then I saw this one and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and get coconut vanilla in medium and then send back the $18 large one to Amazon. So that's what I'm gonna do. Cause you know I love my mediums. Yes. Have you guys burned coconut vanilla? Do you have something to say about it? <gasps> I love it. Okay, this candle will be burned very soon. This is Coffee Bean from Village Candle. So um, you probably don't know yet because I was gonna announce it, but I have about seven or eight coffee candles in this house right now. I mean, obviously unburned. I've only burned one of them, Stranger Things. Hopper's coffee burned all the way down. Um, I'm doing Swan Creek right now, and I can't remember, it's like French espresso or something like that, Swan Creek. I have one from Candleberry. I have um, Cafe Latte from Bath and Body Works, which is a fairly recent one. I've got freshly brewed coffee. I've got this one. I've got, I've got a couple others. I have like a ton of coffee candles, and I just thought, as they were all being accumulated roughly in the same time, let's have a coffee week. Shall we have a coffee week? I'm gearing up for it. I would like it to be 
Um, I was hoping for late August, but now since I'm backed up with all my candle reviews and everything else, it'll probably be like in September, second week of September or something. And what I will do is do a coffee review every single day for an entire week. We'll do all my coffee candles, we'll review all of them, and then at the end we'll like talk about them. Or we'll compare and contrast as we go along, yeah? I just think that would be fantastic. Spoiler alert, <laughs> they all kind of sound, smell about the same because I, in my nose, have a particular coffee fragrance that I like. It's very similar to like the freshly brewed coffee from Bath & Body Works. It's a deep, roasty, black kind of coffee, not too many add-ins. The only candle in the collection so far that is significantly different is the Cafe, Cafe Latte from Bath & Body Works, which has a lot of cream and cinnamon in it. But since it's fairly recent and um, you know came out within the next two weeks, and I think it's fairly successful, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there as well, even though it's a little bit different. So it's really just kind of battle of the coffees that all smell relatively similar, and all of them, frankly, smell good. They smell like good coffee candles, not bad ones. Cool ones, not uncool ones, but the proof is in the burning. So we're gonna talk about nuances if there are nuances. We're gonna talk about price differences. We're gonna talk about availability differences. And we're definitely gonna talk about burn quality differences and performance and strength and throw. We're gonna talk about all of that. So um, put that on your calendars. Be bracing yourself. Gird your loins for Coffee Week here on Coffee and Candles channel. Oh yeah, by the way, I went ahead and set up an Instagram um, account under the name Coffee and Candles channel. Because <laughs> Coffee and Candles was already taken. So Coffee and Candles, and there's like an underscore underneath each one of them. Coffee, underscore, and, underscore, candles, underscore, channel. Yeah, that's the end. So, follow me over on Insta. I've had an Instagram account before, and I still have one, but it's like a personal one. I don't actually post that many things, but you know, like everybody, I'm always looking on Insta, you know? It's just my account to look at other people's accounts. <laughs> But perhaps it is good for me to have like a candelicious one, you know, because there are oftentimes I like to post like a picture of a candle that I'm burning, but I don't on my personal Insta because I have lots of friends and family who are like, why are you putting candles on your like Insta? We don't care about that. You know what I mean? Your friends and family who just are not into candles the way that you are. And they're like, man, that's weird. That's just really weird. Like, I don't need to see what you're burning today. It's, you know? Um, so that's why I haven't used it in that way. But so now that I have like the dedicated coffee and candles channel and stuff, I won't feel embarrassed if all of my candle people are there to like post candle content. I should have done this before, but now it's up. Okay, so coffee week coming up. Two more village candles that I got. <gasps> okay, folks, I had a little tiny mini one of this um, that I got from Village Candle maybe like a year ago, and I thought it smelled really good. So Village Candle has a completely different approach to, and most major candle companies do have a different approach to, to Kringle. Kringle is like the king of Halloween, and, or the queen or whatever. And they do, I mean like 20, it seems like 27 candles every year. A good percentage of them are new fragrances every year. I mean, they just do Halloween with an intensity, with an extraness that nobody else can touch. Most other can major candle companies have a very small spate of Halloween candles that just come out every year and are like fairly successful. Um, so for Bath & Body Works, it's like Ghoul Friend, which I think is, I, I recoil from that candle, but it's very popular, comes out every year, you know. Um, I don't know, they have a few others. Obviously pumpkin carving too, they usually put in as a Halloween candle. Homeworks has the Possessed Plum and has, um, Midnight Moon or something like that. Oh, you guys know. You guys know all the candles. I 
since I'm not like a huge Halloween person, like I'm only vaguely aware of them. Hmm. Um, anyway, Village's candles are pumpkin scarecrow. Oh my gosh, I am gonna burn that soon. That candle, and I've only smelled it on cold, is like mind blowingly good, mind blowingly. Like it smells like pumpkin carving and pumpkin bonfire from Bath and Body Works, which are like two of their best pumpkin candles and two of my favorite fall candles of all time. It's like they had a baby. Ah! <laughs> so Pumpkin Scarecrow from Village has been around for a really long time, super successful. I have that one. And then they have this one too, which is Ghost Cemetery. And then they have this other one too, and I can't remember what it is, but it is also very good. Um, I just can't remember exactly what it is. But anyway, they have three major Halloween candles. This one is frankincense, clove, sandalwood, and forest green. Oh yeah, it's really nice. Kind of herbal, but like in a very dry herbal way, kind of like, almost like tea leaves, you know? Oh, with a lot of musk and even some like caramel overtones. It does not overdo it on the spices. So if you're concerned about that, don't be Ghost Cemetery. So excited to burn this. And then very similarly, here is Forbidden Forest. And Forbidden Forest is, this might be one that they've repackaged as several different things. You know what I mean? Tell me if you know. Um, so this isn't, I don't know that this is one of, it wasn't originally in their like traditional trio of Halloween candles, but it's been kind of hovering around as like a fourth wannabe. Whoa, this is so good. But this is patchouli central for sure. All right, so this is pine, herbaceous, cedar wood, and smoke. And it is a lot of smoke and it is a lot of patchouli. And it doesn't list patchouli here, although in the more extensive scent notes, it may list patchouli. It better, because <laughs> there's a lot of it. And then there's a lot of greenery as well. I This is my kind of candle, and I'm so excited about it. So um, Forbidden Forest will definitely be burned up. And folks, that's all of our village candles. Let's segue over to the Yankee portion of this video. So um, let's do the two Yankees that I either bought on Yankee Candle or I bought on Amazon, but I can't honestly remember. One of them is Seaside Woods, and this is actually a second one. So I bought Seaside Woods already at a Yankee Candle store maybe six or seven months ago. Just really obsessed with this fragrance. I believe it came out fairly recently for the first time, and I wanna say 2019, but I could be incorrect about that. I only became aware of it very recently when I was in a Yankee candle store smelling all the candles and I was like, oh, what is this? So while I was hardcore boycotting Yankee, <laughs> I think we've all kind of been there. Um, there were a lot of collections and a lot of candles that came out, most of which weren't particularly successful, but there were some real gems in there that I just had absolutely no knowledge of because I was just, Yankee Candle was dead to me during that era. This is one of them. So I'm just experiencing for, for the first time and it is so beautiful, so intoxicatingly gorgeous. This is actually not a briny ocean kind of candle. So it may be a little bit mismarketed on that level. This is much more a like cozy cashmere kind of fragrance with a lot of musk and a lot of vanilla. And if I'm not mistaken, something that is very warm and almost carameled. So that makes me think that there's probably a lot of amber in it. And then even on top of the amber, it is like, a like a gourmandy roasted caramel kind of smell that just makes the entire fragrance glow. It is so beautiful. It's deep, it's nuanced, it's bassy, but it's also like very, very approachably sweet and comforting. It runs the gamut. It's kind of in that mid-range. It's a little bit bassy. It's got a few of those caramel um, top notes. It's just really gorgeous. And with the sweetness of the caramel and the amber, definitely makes it much more of a balanced, almost unisexual kind of fragrance as opposed to like a bassy, more masculine one. 
Yes, the musk elements are probably a little bit woody as well. So think like the driftwood kind of genre. But then, like I said, there's a very fresh, and I don't know if it's a true cotton or linen note, but to me, it smells very like fresh cashmere-ish. Stunning candle, unfortunately. Other shoe drops. Um, I'm burning it right now. And he is in the best, the guest bathroom with the door closed. <laughs> because in the guest bathroom, he really only gets up to about a two or a three. <laughs> Yankee, why? Why? <laughs> it, it just makes me so angry when a company has a really excellent fragrance that doesn't perform, that has no strength and throw. Like, why? You've done all the hard elements. Just give it a good strength and throw and you're done. That's it, that's the finish, that's the closer, right? Oh, it makes me so angry. So I feel as though, a spoiler alert, because I will do a review on it, but I can't recommend it. Not with that strength and throw. It burns fine, it burns great. It's a great soy blend formula that they've got here. Um, and a fantastic fragrance that I'm pretty sure almost everyone would adore. Adore! Oh my gosh, I know so many women who would love this fragrance. But if it's not gonna perform, like what's the point? What is the point? Like I'm so dismayed that frankly, I'm considering returning this one because I just, time is, life is too short for those kind of candles. You know what I mean? All right, another one from this signature medium is this one right here, which is dried lavender and oak, which is a candle that has been around for quite a bit and has a great following and is a fantastic fragrance. A little bit musky, quite a bit herbal, a little bit woody. Oh, it's so great. It's actually very much in the same genre as this one. Again, a little bit bassy, quite a bit mid, maybe a little bit high notes. It's got a sweet lavender dimension to it. Ooh, it's just, again, a very well blend, blended, gorgeous candle. Um, and I have never actually burned it, so I'm really happy to burn it. But I did a big, um, <laughs> I got some new storage elements and did a huge like candle reorganization of my storage of candles like a week or two ago. So I've been doing things like that, right? Um, and I realized that I had already bought this in the same format. So I just don't know. All things being equal, I don't love having duplicates unless it's like a mind blowing candle for me and I just don't know that it will be however nice it is and if it's gonna perform like that seaside woods it's a no for me so if you have this and especially in this kind of a format does it perform does it have good strength and throw I know it's a gorgeous fragrance tell me about the strength and throw this one's kind of on the I don't know, I'm on the fence about it. I'm on the fence about what I want to do with it. Okay, then let's talk about the three wicks. So these three wicks were all three wicks that I um, purchased from Yankee Candle online. They are mostly from the new fall line because I did promise I'm gonna get these candles and they were such a good price. Like I wanna say they were in the 12 or 11 dollar price point that I was like, oh heck, I'll just buy even a few that I'm not really sure about. But at that price point, I will definitely try and review. So the ones that I probably, or the one, <laughs> that I probably would have bought at any price is this one right here, which is afternoon scrapbooking. And yes, these are horrendous, horrendous labels that I was hoping were just like a European thing. <laughs> But they are not. This is what they went with this year. This is what they went with. Um, what I could not see on the online pictures is that it's textured and it has this like wood grain kind of on it. But frankly, it just makes it look a little bit more busy. The afternoon font is so terrible. And it's also like very kind of weirdly spooky looking. The like, the picture here 
might have been nice if it if it had actually been colored correctly as opposed to all red toned. This candle is called Afternoon Scrapbooking and with the like blood red and the crazy font, you would think it was some sort of like Halloween candle, but like a really badly done one. Oh, I can't, oh my gosh. Yankee Candle sent me this email cause I'm on their mailing list, right? They sent me this email like three days ago and it was like, Big changes coming to Yankee Candle. Like that was the line. Did you get this this email? Big changes coming to Yankee Candle. And I was like, wait, what? Bef I like, cause usually like spam, I just delete all that stuff. Unless the, unless the opening line is save 75% off of all these candles. Like I'm not gonna open it up for the most part, right? Or if it's like a major sale weekend, I'll look, right? So I clicked open that email. Big changes coming to Yankee Candle. And literally the top of my mind, it was like stronger candles, stronger candles, not shitty graphic design, good wax formula, thoughtful fragrances. Literally all these things are going through my mind. These are the big changes I would like to see from Yankee Candle. No, bait and switch. The big changes are like a more generous price point conversion on their like, you know, their, their, their rewards program or something like that. Like, it's just stupid. Like, I don't care about that. And then I just rolled my eyes. I'm like, Yankee, big changes coming to Yankee. Those are not the changes we need to see. Those are not the droids we're looking for. What we need is thoughtful fragrances that make sense and are gorgeous. And if you can't make them, then just bring back the old school Yankee fragrances that are in fact thoughtfully constructed and designed. What we want is good fragrances with strength and throw. And then a bonus would be not shitty graphic design. Those are the big changes we wanna see. I'm pretty sure that's what all of us wanna see. I could be wrong. Maybe you guys will correct me in the comments and be like, no, I just really want a more generous point conversion. <laughs> no, I don't need a generous point conversion to buy more of your subpar candles. Oh, okay. Close parentheses. <laughs> I like these like copper lids. They just like don't do anything for their like really bad labels. <laughs> okay. So that preamble over, we've got three wicks and we've got colored wax. Yankee, 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 Yankee. Look at this. This one has a beautiful colored wax that you can hardly see. Although now that I'm looking at it, yeah, I mean, it just kind of, it's like semi-opaque. So it kind of like, you know, one of the major strengths of Yankee Candle has been and will always be colored wax. I mean, nobody does colored wax like Yankee Candle. It's as simple as that. I've said this before, but it bears repeating. Do you remember back in the 90s, back in the early 2000s, you know, back in the 80s, if you were with Yankee Candle at that point and you went to one of those mom and pop New England Yankee Candle devoted stores and you walked in and not only were you greeted with that amazing cacophony of Yankee Candle smells, but the colors of the rainbow around that store Oh my gosh. Sometimes I remember my local store in recent memory has reorganized the candles, not by genre or by fragrance, but by color. So that it's like, it sweeps the color of the rainbow all the way around. All the blue candles, all the green candles, all the red, all the yellow. Ah, oh, stunning. Yankee Candle does color so well. Why don't they just do a colored just do colors, just do colors. Just give us a transparent glass. These, these wraparounds are expensive. Just give us the colors. And then I really wouldn't mind if you did something like this. Just put a nice label on the front of it. You know what I mean? 
Photorealistic might be nice, a la the traditional Yankee candles, but if you're trying to get away from that and you wanna do something a little bit more graphic, it's fine. Um, mo I'm not confident with the graphic designers they've got here right now, and I don't love the clip art, but the clip art has been done more respons responsibly and thoughtfully here and on a couple of their other candles, the Target clip art candles, that the Caribbean line was very nice this year. So if they want to stick with the clip art, they can do it a little bit more tastefully. But really, the, the amazing aspect of this should be about the colored wax. And then it takes the pressure off of your label. Okay, I'm going to let that go. Afternoon scrapbooking is this like really lovely kind of rosy taupe color and this candle is so beautiful. I think it's the standout in their collection this year. It is a little bit musky, a little bit perfumey, but it has this beautiful fresh, dry, warm wood smell to it that is really the dominant note overall and it could be a cedar. It's just so beautiful. It could almost be a Palo Santo though as well. It's really gorgeous. Oh, it is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance and I'm really hoping it performs. So that's afternoon scrapbooking, which like I said, I would have purchased at almost any price point. Then I went with this one, which is pumpkin cinnamon swirl. We're not gonna belabor the same issue, but look at that. Oh yeah, that's nice. And this is a really lovely pumpkin scent. It doesn't break the mold. It's not giving us anything that is so unique or innovative, but it's a good pumpkin fragrance. And I don't know that Yankee Candle is quite as good at pumpkin fragrances as like Bath & Body Works is, for instance. Um, and they've made a lot of formula tweaks to their very long-standing spiced pumpkin and pumpkin apple fragrances that have been around forever. And I've stopped, stopped buying them because the last few years, they've just smelled really strange. So unfortunately, this is a very welcome add to this collection. It's just a really good basic pumpkin spice candle. This one is Basie, and it has a lot of roasted and caramelized um, notes to it. I wouldn't actually be surprised if there was a heavy percentage of brown sugar in it. And like I said, even kind of a caramel note, but it's it's deep and it's roasty, so I don't know that it comes across as cloying, as I'm not really a huge caramel person. And it's a very nice pumpkin spice. Gosh, it comes super close to being kind of a craft store pumpkin spice, but just stays on this side of it. I really like it. It's really, really nice. It's a great basic pumpkin spice candle, especially if you like them deep, roasty, bassy. Really, I would check this one out, um, especially if it's at a good price point. These other two, I was not gonna buy, but at $10, I was like, ah, oh, heck, I'll try it. I really wanted to try, there was a, um, the paddling on the lake with the mint note. I really wanted that one, but it wasn't, it either was sold out on the website or it wasn't in this three wick format. It's weird. It seems like there's a couple candles in the line that aren't coming out in the three wick. And I think that's a big mistake and I don't understand why. I think what, for, for their new collections, I think they just have to offer it in every format across the board. And then once the season passes and you either integrate this new candle into the core collection or you don't, that's when you make decisions about whether or not you want to offer it, continue to offer it in all formats. But I really think that like the first maiden voyage of this collection, it needs to be available in all formats full stop. I really want that paddling on the lake. Is it as good, at least on cold smell, as the afternoon scrapbooking? No, but it has a little bit of potential. I wanna try it out. I mean, it is a men's cologne, so is Log Cabin Flannel, which I've got here, and so is Woodland Weekend Memories. So Log Cabin Flannel has this kind of green wax. And yeah, it's just kind of a woody, foresty men's cologne. 
it's a bit on the generic side at this point in the game, given that men's colognes have really stepped up and are now quite nuanced and unexpected. I don't know that this is unexpected enough. And I don't know, and there are many other reviewers who have said this too, I don't know why there's not more confidence at Yankee Candle in putting out simply a good smoky outdoorsy fall candle with natural elements without it necessarily being a personal premium fragrance. We don't need five men's colognes. And I feel as though the last fall seasons, over the last like three or four years, Yankee Candle has gone to this well way too much. Just like four different men's colognes. Like it's not, I just don't understand it. I don't. There are other genres for fall candles and it's like Yankee is incapable, just incapable. It's fine to do a bonina toffee, by the way, but I do think that that maybe should have been in the regular line rather than the Halloween line. How it was executed is a different matter, but like you should have a couple, one or two really good fall gourmands. Here we have pumpkin cinnamon swirl, and actually we've got the campfire cocktails too, which didn't smell bad either, both leaning a little bit on the basic and generic side, but definitely you should have one or two spots here, even with like a five or six candle collection that are like straight up fall gourmands. There's just no question. And then I think you should have at least two that are outdoorsy, that are woodsy, that are some kind of natural kind of experience in nature kind of candle. I think going to the lake or going aquatic is a very fine intuition, but the last few lake candles in the fall from Bath and Body Works have just been men's colognes. All right, so that's log cabin flannel. This one I hated at first because it just smells like, it's a heavy perfume. Um, and there's nothing fall-like about it, really, except that it's bassy and it's got a good deal of musk in it. By the way, this is a nice, sweet gray color. But then I smelled it once and I realized that it kind of had some Baccarat Rouge leanings. So the sweeter element on top is very carameled, very sweet, very, it's just very Baccarat Rouge if you know the perfume, right? Um, this is a much basier, more masculine version of Baccarat Rouge. So um, Bath and Body Works, and if you've been on my channel for a while, you know this. Bath and Body Works duped Baccarat Rouge um, this summer with First Sight from the wedding collection that they marketed for men. It is a very good Baccarat Rouge dupe, there's no question. It might lean a hair more masculine, a little bit more bassy and less sweet than Baccarat Rouge. This is very bassy and very masculine. So the Bath & Body Works masculine nuance is so subtle that frankly, it's just a very good Baccarat Rouge dupe straight up. Um, very, very close to that fragrance. Just if it leaned in one direction, the way that like Ariana Grande's version, Cloud, its version of Baccarat Rouge leans more sweet and feminine. First Sight from Bath & Body Works leans the opposite direction, but they're all very, very, very close dupes of Baccarat Rouge. This is a much more distant version of Baccarat Rouge. Um, but the elements are there, there's no question, and this is a very strongly masculine version of Baccarat Rouge. I think Bath & Body Works would have been more successful marketing something like this as the men's portion of that um, dressed in white first sight um, wedding collection because it really does, it's, it's pretty masculine. It's pretty masculine, but at the same time, it's kind of a version of Baccarat. So if you like Baccarat and you like masculine candles, hey, maybe check it out. I don't know why it's in this fall collection. There's nothing really particularly fall about it except that it's a men's cologne and it has musk in it. I just think we're, we're to the point where we're expecting more innovative candles for a fall collection or even for Halloween for that matter. Hey, I picked this one up too. They had this like weird collection of like flowers and I don't know why. I mean, they are kind of like more 
brown toned they and muted and they look kind of more fall like than like bright spring morning but i don't know why the flowers to be honest um anyway there was a little mini collection most of them were were i think returning favorites but i've never actually smelled this rainy day so i went ahead and got one of these and i was gonna fully return it if i hated it but i didn't hate it and i'm gonna burn it i don't know if i'm gonna burn it in the fall it's a really interesting fragrance. It's got a lot of layers and a lot, it's a lot going on, but in a much better way than some of these other colognes. Yes, it is a conceptual. Oh man, this is a good candle. I mean, on cold, I don't know what it's gonna burn like, but it's a good candle. It's an aquatic candle. It's, um, it's got a brininess to it and a marine quality. And the sweetness that is coming, uh, almost an herbalness too, like a seaweed or a sea kelp. I mean, it's a real strong like ocean candle, but it is, it doesn't have like all those horrible basey like musk notes along with a sparkling bergamot that just makes the whole thing like a personal fragrance and very obviously masculine or whatever else it is. It's not, there is a faint perfuminess about it, but it's very subtle. And the whole candle just comes across as like fresh and outdoorsy and bright and, oh man, that is nice. It's really nice. I like it. I like it a lot. It's not just straight up aquatic though. I mean, it's like ocean briny. So like the rain candle from Village Candle is more of a straight up um, rain candle in that it's, it is aquatic, but it doesn't have as many like salt ocean elements to it. So it could be a rainy day anywhere, you know? This one is obviously an ocean candle. And that situation may be a bit mismarketed. <sighs> Why couldn't they have put a candle like this in either their spring collection or their fall collection? It's a fairly versatile candle. Again, this is what I'm talking about. This is a much better, like, it's just a thoughtful fragrance. It's balanced, it's pleasant, and it gives us something natural without it being an obvious personal fragrance. Tell me about this candle. When did it come out? Have you burned it? Is it successful? Hey, I've just got this sitting here. I just got this from Marshalls or TJ Maxx. This is a root candle actually, and it's bouquet. Um, there aren't that many candles that I usually see from root at um, Marshalls. As you can see, I got this for $7. I've seen it in that Marshalls for a long time and I've picked it up several times and I didn't purchase it. And then finally when it went on double clearance, I was like, oh heck, I'll take it for seven. Bouquet is weird. This is why I didn't pick it up. I think it is vaguely floral and sweet. I've mentioned this before. I think it's the, the fragrance of the beeswax. So Root uses beeswax and the bees, you know how people say they can smell soy wax or they can smell paraffin? I can smell this beeswax formula that they use at Root. Um, some of their candles, given the fragrance profile or the strength of it, mask it a little bit more and more successfully. Other fragrances are either too weak or they just don't have the right profile to really adequately mask the smell of the beeswax. This one is just like, I'm just smelling the beeswax. And don't get me wrong, their beeswax formula smells great. <laughs> it smells great. I've said this before, to my nose, it smells like a donut. It smells like almost a fried donut. And I don't know why, it just does. So many of their candles like vanilla cashmere, or what is, what is it, S tobacco vanilla, vanilla tobacco. Um, I love that candle, but I can smell the beeswax through it and it's giving it this almost like gourmandy donut as well, which actually works great for that fragrance. There are many fragrances where like that kind of donut smell um, work really well. And it's impressive me saying I like it too because I'm not a gourmand person, 
It is really delicious. But the actual botanical, I think there's some botanical greenery in here too. There's greenery that I can kind of smell through the donut haze and a little bit of floral and a lot of sweet. But really, it's just a dominantly beeswax. Um, that amazing donut smell, which makes it smell like a fall festival kind of candle. <laughs> maybe that's why it's on TJ Maxx and maybe that's why it's on double clearance. Um, but at some point I'll burn that and figure out that fragrance. Oh look, I've got a couple Bath & Bodies too. Look what I got online. Radiant Red Maple. I didn't get this last year when it came out. Whew. That is a lot. That is a lot of sugar. <laughs> Too much for me, but I like it. It is just very high range to mid range. And it's apple and it's marshmallow. And it's something else like maybe vanilla. And it just smells really nice. I like it a lot. It's kind of a conceptual. I am loving it. Oh, they say smoky woods. Mm. I'm not getting a whole lot of that. I mean, maybe like a vague, a vague little darkness about it. Not full smoke, not full wood, but um, yeah, and it has this like really pretty maple leaf on it. So I'm excited to burn that one this year. Oh, look what else I got. <gasps> Candy Apple Cauldron! With like this lid thing on it. Look at that. Ooh. Look at him. Mine has a crack too. Like, you know how it's, there you go. You can kind of see the crack. Um, and then there's that. It looks spooky, it looks cool. Yeah. And I like the smell of it. It's not, frankly, it's not even as nuanced as Radiant Red Maple. It's pretty much like a crisp green apple. But not too sharp or sour. And a little bit of vague body care, but not in a bad way. Yeah, it's kind of one-dimensional, but it's not bad smelling. So I went ahead and got it, because why not? You're always looking for apple candles to be burning in September. All right, very quickly, I've got a couple Homeworks candles. I bought this one off of Mercari, I think. This is Wisteria Vine. I didn't even look back. Have I reviewed Wisteria Vine before? I might have, because it's got all that green element in it. Or is there another vine candle from Homeworks that I reviewed that has more vines in it? Anyway, this is an OG. This is one of those OG flower candles from Harry Slatkin. I'm always looking for those because um, this one was poured in 2018. Yeah. Um, and it may actually have been poured in the US as well. It may not have been poured in Vietnam. Um, yeah, so I'm always looking for kind of the OG ones. So, um, Wisteria Vine, it's perfumey, but it's a really nice floral. And then I have two versions of the same thing, which is Kitchen Herbs. I finally found the Kitchen Herbs at Marshall's. So $16.99. This one was poured though in 2022. Um, so it may be a really bad one and it's got like that frosted, whatever. Ooh, it smells yummy. But look, I also got it at the same time off of like Mercari or eBay. And it was this version right here with the colored wax. See that? And this one was burned, this one was poured in 2021. Wild Mint Leaves Fresh Thyme Sage Leaf Bay Laurel. This one smells better. So you know how I say that Harry Slatkin has this very trademark um, fruity floral or fruity finish? So he has a lot of candles that are very like white floral. He does florals really well. Um, 
but many of them have like a fruity element to them, either overtly or just in the nuance. So I call it a fruity finish. Fruity finish for Harry Slatkin, and he knows how to just turn a floral and give it that little fruity pop that makes it a little bit more authentic, a little bit more fresh smelling. Just, it's really gorgeous. This actually is a white floral with a very herbal finish. And I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't sure because I'm, I'm an herbal lover. I would say that this is not herbal so much as floral. Um, like a white floral and it's very nice. And it probably has some amber in it as well. It's a little bit perfumey, a little bit conceptual. But then it has this strong herbal finish on the back of it that is just so beautiful and kind of cuts it a little bit. Wild Mint Leaves Thyme Sage Laurel. But unlisted here is a great deal of white floral, I think. And it could be like a jasmine. He uses jasmine quite a lot. Yeah, so it could very well be that. Um, if, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I'm missmelling. Yeah. There's some green botanical notes too that kind of smell a little bit more green vine, green stem. I'm really interested in this candle. It's not a hardcore herb candle, but it's a really well-rounded and pleasing one and one that I would expect from Harry Slotkin. So I don't know that I'm gonna burn this here. There's just too much to burn in the fall prime time, but I may hold on to this and do it in early spring this year. And I've got two versions of it so I can compare how they perform. All right, that's it. Friends, that's what I've got for you. Oh, I'll show you this too. I bought this off of Amazon during the Prime sale. <gasps> One of my favorite candles from Outdoor Fellow. Oh my gosh. I think I got it for like $17 or $18. Um, this was a limited edition like um, island travel kind of collection that came out I think last summer. And I there's Bonaire and Maui and Fire Island in it I think. Of the three, I definitely liked Fire Island and Maui the best. And Maui was the real revelation because it is a pineapple candle. And I don't like pineapple candles and I did not expect to love this candle. And it is intoxicating and unexpected and everything. Oh my gosh. I love this candle. This is a true pine apple candle because it has a great deal of spruce and fir on the bottom of it and who would have thought that like pineapple with a coniferous tree marriage made in heaven it says pineapple tree pine needles it's got pine in it oh, it's a lot of pine and then some other things some oak moss some sandalwood some amber. Oh, lovely candle. And the recent iterations now have a really nice like lid slash dust protector that is so welcome. Oh my gosh, I love this candle. I adore it and I highly recommend it. So put it in your Amazon wish list. Fire Island was great too. Fire Island was more smoky and it would be a great candle for fall. This might be a great transition to fall candle. Late August, pineapple into the pine. Maybe I'll put it in my, I'll put it in my summer hall of fame for sure. For sure. Which by the way, stay tuned. I'm gonna do a summer hall of fame pretty soon of like all the summer candles. I, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Summer is I think actually my favorite my favorite fragrances are in the summer season. My favorite candle burning season is weirdly summer. Don't get me wrong, I don't like the actual season. I can't stand being hot and I especially can't stand humidity. So I'm not a summer girl in that respect, although I do like desert heat if it's dry. And I'm also by a coast plus, yes. Um, but yeah, not really a summer person, but man, the summer fragrances and some of my absolute favorite fragrances of all time are summer candles. So yeah, we're going to do a summer hall of fame for sure in this month. Um, I also have, which I promised a long time ago and have not delivered on it, 
a little um, vintage Bath and Body Works haul that I still need to talk about that I got off of Facebook Marketplace. I'm looking at one of them right here. Beach grass, look at that. And this looks like it is a 2002, is that possible? Is it a 2002? It might be, because it's got a two at the end, 2093. Pretty sure it's a 2002. This is back when the candles were 1950. And it's a Slatkin. Mmm, it's nice. Anyway, vintage Bath and Body Works haul, and we're gonna talk about that. And of course, we've got the five or six candles that I have burned and need to talk about. And then of course, we'll have that um, Kringle haul coming up as well. So we've got some things coming down the pike. And once I kind of, I think this week is gonna be less punishing at work. So once I start like um, catching my groove, you know, sometimes maybe some of you have a work experience that's similar where it just comes in waves. And like, there's like two weeks that are just like hell on earth or an entire month. And then it kind of dips and it's like, okay. And then, and then your work is manageable for a while. I think, knock on wood, I'm entering a phase where I think the work is gonna become more manageable and I'll have a lot more time to review and burn and all kinds of things. So thanks for your patience and thanks for hanging on if you did. Um, once I get up and running in the next two weeks, I think that I owe you guys like a review a day or a review every other day. And I really want to get to that place because I've got kind of a backlog. And I got to burn all these candles too. I got to burn them all, right? I'm tired. These have been sitting here on my counter forever because I need to haul them on this channel and then I can start burning them. And there were a couple times where I'm like, I'm going to burn. And then I was like, no, you haven't done a video talking about buying it. <laughs> so now that you know I've bought it, I can start burning these, especially some of these Yankee candles. Stay tuned, my friends, really glad to see you. Um, welcome back <laughs> to me and to you. And um, I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks so much, bye.